Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest is, she's an actress, a singer, an S, a S, ugh, I'm tongue-tied, an SFX makeup artist, and she's part of a band, Session 5. Beth Metcalf, how's it going? Hey, it's going good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on um, the show tonight. And you're also a stunt woman. So what got you into doing stunts? You know, it, I, I've i always kind of been, I wouldn't say a reckless person, but I, I like to do fun things. And it, it all started with stilt walking. And I, I found a way to start stilt walking. And I was like, oh, I love doing this. And they were like, you know, like you can do your own stunts. And so... I, I found a friend who was a gymnast and he taught me all the stuff about falling and kind of like strength and stuff and how to, how to do a lot of the tumbling stuff. And then I hired a fight coordinator who taught me all about fighting and combat and stuff. So there's a ton of training and, and now I get to do my own stunts. Have you done some on some of your films? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, I'd say the, the craziest one is um, Escape from Muddy Run. It just came out on DVD. It's uh, exclusive on DVD. Um, and I am, I have a really good, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. I have a really good fight scene in there where I am just throwing this guy all over the place. So it's a, it's a blast. Oh, I bet it was. Have you, uh, went, have you flew through glass or uh, fell off a building yet? <laughs> I want to fall out of a window, like a second story, maybe maybe taller. Uh, I, I haven't done breakaway things yet, and then I want to do wire work really bad. Ooh, look at you. You're in beast mode, man. Look at you. <laughs> Have you thought also uh, taking a little martial arts training to help it out a little bit? Yeah, I've taken some training. Um, I want to have some more training. I find myself um, going from kind of working, working, working to going into training mode so then I learn new things so I think martial arts kind of the next on my list for that stunt wise so how did you get into uh makeup work special effects makeup was that a passion of yours or you or did just automatically fall in on you on your lap yeah um I so I was one of those kids I was I I was really scared of scary movies I was a scaredy cat um and I saw the first couple Saw movies, and I was really scared of them. And to get over my fear, I was like, well, how was it done? So I looked up all the behind-the-scenes stuff, and I was like, oh, those wounds are all fake. Like, how do I do that? And then I just got very, very hyper-fixated and learned how to do all that. I think I was about 12. And then um, got into haunted attractions, haunted houses, found myself on the makeup teams at those, and, um, and then I... After I broke into indie film, there, I found that, especially in Ohio, there's a big need for people who do special effects for horror and all of that. So that's kind of how it built up and where we are now. That That's absolutely true. Um, there's a lot of horror fans here in Ohio, especially indie horror filmmakers. There's a lot of, you know, horror films made here. And then Ohio has the world's largest, you know, haunted houses in the United States. I mean, besides Texas. But hey, why not? And and look at you. You got right into it. Yeah, it's a blast. I love being in the haunt industry. I always block off my... Um, September and October months so that I can do haunted houses. <laughs> I'll check you out. Um, you were also in a film called uh, Trip. How do you say it? Tripidity or how do you say it? Yes, Tripidity. <laughs> Tripidity. Yes, okay. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. So uh, Tripidity it follows uh, kind of this legacy about. Um, there's kind of two different casts for that film. It starts with um, the first cast who they've got this legend of this this demon where you summon it and it'll possess a body and you don't know you're possessed until you're going to kill someone. Then after you kill, the demon goes to the next body. And um, the first group conjures that up. And then in, in the section of my group, I play the bratty jerk teenage Melissa who's like, 
hey guys, I have the best idea for a time. Let's go to this barn and summon a demon. It's going to be great. And um, you can imagine what happens uh, after that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I know it's on Amazon. I need to uh, definitely watch it. You know, um, I like to watch different indie horror films, you know, um, because, you know, like I said, I support the indie filmmakers because they really do, you know, put their heart and soul into it, you know, to get that film just right. And and a lot of people don't realize um, how much time and effort it takes to make a film, write a script, and all that great stuff. Yes, it is. I, I've really fallen in love with indie film. Because I, I had no idea um, anything about it really until I started about three years ago now. Yeah, let's talk about your first indie short. It was called The Girl, and you were part of the CSI investigating this murder. And uh, the girl who played that actress, she was creepy. She um, she gave me the willies, man. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was a blast. I, I definitely was a newbie. I, I had taken some acting trainings and stuff, but I was like, oh, don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera. And it was very different because um, I had started on stage. That's kind of where, where my acting experience came from. And going to camera and screen and building a character there, it was a lot different. And I really enjoyed um, James Pinson. He, he's the one that brought me on. And uh, Chris Ott was a cinematographer there, and that's where it all started. And the first kind of people I got to meet in the industry. So how diff- how different was it from going from a stage actress into becoming an indie uh, film actress? Is there like a difference on like preparation or anything like that? Yeah, I would say so. For stage, it's like you're you're portraying this character to a huge audience it's live you know don't mess up you know um you get one shot every night to do it and you do it multiple nights and the actions are bigger and you have to use your whole body and then when it comes to film you get multiple takes you know to get it right you've got to work on continuity making sure oh i do the same movements every time i do this take and the acting is in the face and the eyes and the slight little smirks and eyebrow raises and it's it's such an attention to detail uh when it transfers over to the screen i I bet it does and you must be a zombie fan or a zombie lover because all the films you've been in so far has something to do with the zombie yeah there's i you know i was a really big walking dead fan i still am but that was kind of one of the first big tv series i got into uh, with my family and um, anytime I can get, I will hop onto anything dealing with zombies because that was also kind of my big thing for um, SFX makeup too. I was always into making the rotting flesh and the zombies, and so I jump at opportunities to be on zombie movies. <laughs> I know there's this one you're g- going to be coming up with. This looks pretty good. It's set in the uh, '70s during Vietnam. It's called Vet Zombie. I love those type of films. You know it's going to be fun, scary, and cheesy all at the same time. It kind of reminds me of like going to the drive-in theater, you know, back in the day, seeing uh, those interesting type of films. Um, How did you become part of Vet Zombie? So uh, it all started with a film called Escape from Muddy Run. Uh, It was with Troy Fritz, uh, Ask Backward Productions, and we... I just saw their film poster one day and I just shot my shot and messaged them. I was like, Hey, this looks really cool. I love stuff like this. Um, If you're casting at all, like, please let me know. And uh, one thing led to another. And then I ended up on the film. And then um, after we did buddy run, um, we did red zombie, which is still in production should be released soon. I would say later this summer or in the fall. Um, We, we shot that last I think it was June we shot that. So that one's in the works. And this is kind of the the threequel, the, the third movie installment out of the, the three. So what character are you playing in Vet Zombie? Is it an interesting character since it's during the 70s? Yeah, I'm, I believe I'm playing an agent. I don't know too much about my 
character yet. I know I'm working with uh, the director Troy. We'll be acting together uh, in some scenes, and I am I am highly anticipating finding out the script and what I get to do, what happens to me, if I die or live. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> That's awesome. Now let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about a uh, director and writer we both know, uh, Ariel Alexander. And um, I had him on my podcast, and we talked about this um, upcoming TV series that you're going to be part of in also Montana. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? And how did, did um, Ariel reach out to you, or did you reach out to him? Or um, were you, you his idea to play Lynn in this upcoming TV series? Yes, yeah, so misunderstood. I I am really excited for this one. I've been really looking forward to it. Um, so he he was directed towards me through a mutual friend because um, he was having a. He told me that he was having a difficult time finding Lynn, um, the right person to play Lynn, and so we got on a Zoom call and um, went through the script and, and whatnot, and, and it clicked. And we we clicked really well. We're great friends, and I'm super excited to work with him. I haven't got to meet him in person yet. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll be playing Lynn, who's kind of the cat lady, dorky, down-to-earth girl, um, which is similar to me. I'm, I'm a nerd, and I'm down-to-earth and just love hanging with people and just – kind of being the mom of the friend group that's kind of Lynn and um you know she jokes around with her friends and has little digs at them and Montana will be playing alongside with me as well um and we are very very excited yeah so (laughs) I don't know how much I can say yeah I'm trying to get out of you because you know uh Ariel didn't give me much (laughs) either but he said yeah you can come on the set sometime and check it out and I was like Oh, you know what? I'll come all the way to Cleveland for that, damn it. And then uh oh, yes. and then Montana, he plays Joey. So uh yeah. so uh you know you know what he should do on the set, you know, you like that show Friends Joey. He should go he should go up to Aaron and go, How you doing? <laughs> oh, he would too. Montana's so fun. He's he's a jokester. I'm really excited because, you know, like it's it's exciting because we already have that chemistry, and Lynn and Joey's chemistry is so important in in that film. And so I'm super excited to get to play alongside Montana and be on the same set with him because we really revel in those moments when we get to do projects together. That's and we both love Ariel. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so do I, and I haven't even met the guy. You know, he's going to be getting a big hug from me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the best. And the whole cast, like, I just, I cannot wait to be in the same room together. It's just insane levels of talent just from all ends. And it's it's going to come together and be awesome. And I then I ch- wait. Yeah, and then I checked an, another short film of yours, uh, Frustrated. Oh, my gosh. That was... That was just so fun to watch, uh, especially especially the part when you when you and your boyfriend went home, and then you had the whiny friend coming over, and the uh, and the actor who played your boyfriend, man, he like he like nailed it. You can tell he was having fun with that role, man. I was just laughing along with him, waiting to see what he's going to do next. So I have a fun fact for you. That is Montana. <laughs> That's Montana. <laughs> yes, that's my real boyfriend. Oh my gosh, he was great. I just love how he had those little snarky attitudes and the mannerism and the facial expressions. It was just priceless that, you know, uh, made that film frustrated. I mean, <laughs> it was good. And and the actress who played the, your whiny friend, man, um, I was I was just like thinking the same thing. It's like, go, go home, come back another time. Uh, let them have their fun date night, man. You know, let them have fun and get crazy. You can come over the next day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Zebra was great. She was a blast to work with. Um, I loved everyone, Tom and Paige and everybody, Tyler, that whole group over there. Um, they're up in Columbus and they are a blast to work with. We were, we were testing out, um, lighting and kind of just working together on stuff because we uh, made a winter film team for Ohio winter film so we were like oh let's just mess around and make something and we were able to create that and Tom edited it and posted it and I was like oh, I was 
rocked. Like, I'm so happy that we got to post it and show people because it, it turned out awesome. Yeah, Frustrated was a fun short. And um, and, <laughs> and all my listeners are listening. You need to go on the YouTube and check out Frustrated. But also the girl, too. I mean, the girl was, you know, great, too. Um, I like those type of films with the mental cases, you know. <laughs> And um, you're also a singer too. Um, you're in a band called Session Five. So, uh, how'd you get into singing, and how'd you start Session Five? Oh, it is a crazy, fun story of me meeting Session Five. It was um, a, or almost two years ago, I would say. We're we're about hitting that mark. Um, I was just scrolling on Facebook one day in my apartment, and. I just saw an ad and there was this crazy guy singing on a bar and this band playing. And I was like, something just felt like I needed to message them. And I was like, I want to see if I could be a part of this. And I was like, ah, they won't see it. Um, but I sent a message and I was like, Hey, like, are you guys accepting female singers at all? Like just, hi, I'm Beth. And they, uh, they replied like really quick. And they were like, yeah, actually we're looking for backup vocalists. And I was like, oh, bet. Okay. And so I drove up to Columbus and I auditioned and clicked instantly with the band. And I sang back up for a long time. And then our lead singer, Ashron, he is moving to Atlanta to pursue his career. Um, and he kind of passed me the torch. And now I'm leading the band. and It's a blast. I know. I was looking on your uh, social media page uh, recently. You were having fun, you know, just singing away. Yeah, we had a gig in uh, Jackson, Ohio at the Marquet. It was our first big ticketed concert, I would say. And um, it was a fantastic time. It was a blast. All right. Since you're, um, a, I heard you're a good singer, so you at least got to sing me something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I will do, I'll do something from one of our sets. We just added this. Okay. Um, Megan Trainer's uh, Made You Look. I'll okay. Okay. I could have my Gucci on. I could wear my Louis Vuitton. But even with nothing on, that I made you look. I made you look. Yeah, I look good in my Versace dress. But I'm hard to wear my morning hair hey, is a mess. But even with my hoodie on, that I made you look. <laughs> that was awesome. You know something? I'm looking for somebody to do a theme song for my podcast. Maybe I'll have you write a theme song and sing it for me and see if I like it. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me know. I will do that. Absolutely. Um, since, <laughs> since you were, um, at first you weren't into horror, you know, when watching the Saw films. Okay. So what was that one film that really got you into horror, you know, where you're at today? Oh, man. There's so many good ones. Uh, I think... Oh, man. I know Saul's good. Saul got me into SFX. I would say my favorite movie that really got me into it was Creep. Okay. Because that was an indie movie. It's not as well known. Um, follows the two guys. Guy answers an ad on Craigslist uh, to film this other guy. And I can't spoil it because it is just, it is just phenomenal. It was the acting in that and the fact that it was independent and it got picked up and then they made creep Two. It just inspired me. And that the acting is just crazy good in that film. And there's barely any blood and gore or anything. It's just suspenseful. I definitely have to check out creep. You know, I'm, I'm a sucker mm -hmm. for those type interests in films. And, um, you also worked for, uh, writer director, Jake danger on this, uh, cheesy, zombie film which was <laughs> it was stupid but funny but I, I liked it it was on Tubi Clay Zombies how'd you become part of that fun movie of the claymation zombies uh, you know attacking humans yes that was a blast they had put out a call for extras and I happened to be free that day and I had heard a lot of buzz about Clay Zombies and I was like oh my God, like, I have to get on this. So I, I messaged them. I was like, hey, I'm free. Like, I would love to be in whatever scene you want to put me in. And so they're like, yeah, come be in this dance scene. And, and we spent 
hours. We filled this garage with fog and dance lights, and we had all these cameras, and they had this one song they played the whole time. It was the, the Burn This Mother Down <laughs> song that you hear in the in the film, and um, we were just, they are like, just go crazy, and then we got all these dorky, like, angles of us doing all these crazy dances, and oh my gosh, that was one of the most fun shoots ever. <laughs> oh, it is. I mean, it's a great film, and, <laughs> and when you watch it, you can see the actors, you know, trying hard to act, to, you know, do the roles, or, you know, like, they overact, which makes it funny, especially the sheriff who has the addiction for paprika. I don't know where that came up with, but he just loved that paprika. <laughs> it's brilliant. They've got all the little things in there that just make it that much funnier. I, I love Play Zombies. I just watched that on Tubi again, and it is hilarious. Yeah, and... um. I was talking to Jake, who uh, made uh, Clay Zombies. He also did a, another one he just did. Uh, he's doing a Christmas one, too. Yes, they are doing the Christmas one. I don't know too much about that one, but I'm I'm looking into it because it looks like a blast. Yeah, so um, tell me some of the other upcoming horror films you're coming up with. I saw a whole list of these <laughs> horror films you're in. I mean, who knows? You may be one, the next... Um, Scream Queen or Final Girl and all these indie horror films in Ohio. Hey, that would be awesome. I I love horror so much and it's it's an honor to get to be in this industry working with these people cuz I just the family that it makes too is just amazing. Um and and that said, with um one of my fave film families upcoming in will be filming in May, it is Attack of the Corn Zombies. Hmm. And it is uh, with Acrosar Films. They're Illinois based. Um, I'm actually wearing some of their merch right now that I was in uh, their movie. It came from somewhere, which was our sci fi B movie. Um, it's out on Amazon Prime. Um, and yeah, so Corn Zombies is our next big one. It's 70s based, and it has basically this infected corn has led to just a zombie outbreak in the town. And it follows a couple different storylines uh, with people trying to defend their way through the zombies and the corn. And um, I play Kelly, and I am very obnoxious. And it's me and Jamie Apple and Delilah Hefner. And the three of us are defending our homestead, and I am dying to get the script. I cannot wait. And then um, all my other friends who are in the film, they've got different storylines there's like a whole group and that goes one place and a whole group that goes another place and then um jamie apple and i are splitting sfx for that as well man you got me on that uh b sci-fi flick uh, it came from you know i definitely gonna have to go see that it came from somewhere you know on uh amazon i'm a sucker for b flicks like that is it kind is it kind of like a b flick like uh ed wood type of style film or Yes, it is. It is. It's that's kind of what we we're going for. Um, it's that aspect ratio, grayscale, black and white. And um, I play Quasar, the trigger happy alien that vaporizes everyone she sees. And that was one of my favorite all time roles I've ever played ever. So you've got to check it out. <laughs> I definitely will. And I'll have to definitely get back with you. <laughs> I'll, who knows? Maybe I'll watch it after I get off this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun because we've got the intentional moments where the boom mic drops into frame a little bit and there's a part where someone's arm gets vaporized and you see one of our producers holding the skeleton arm in place and she like runs away real fast and it's just it's so funny um that film is just so self-aware of what it is and that was why i love it so much and the the beauty of that one yeah, you had me at black and white. I love it when uh, good films in black and white because nowadays a lot of people don't like watching black and white. I love watching black and white films, especially horror. Yeah, I love that we decided to go that route um, and the, the writing in it is just so funny. I have so many bloopers just with my own character because Quasar is so serious in the film and just some of the my favorite line is uh how do you know respect for human life and i'm like no and it's just it's really a true gem i'm i'm very excited to see where that one goes 
I'm definitely see it. And plus, you're a gun happy alien. So, did you get to pl- get to play with some fun weapons? Yes, we had our little ray guns. We had ended up um, kind of auctioning them off. We signed them, and and people bought them for as perks on Indiegogo. Um, so that was cool to know that my ray gun is sitting in someone's collection somewhere. Um, and that was really fun. It was mostly the gun, and I was just shooting everyone. So when you die, you turn into a skeleton, and it's that that kind of trope. I I shoot a bird at one point too, and a skeleton bird falls out of the sky. Oh my gosh, you got me hooked on this. I'm definitely gonna check that out. I'm surprised you didn't get the uh, Marvin the Martian, you know, you know, voice and be like. You know, my Acme Space Modulator <laughs> Blaster or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very, Quasar's very dry and monotone, and that was, that was, there's the two aliens. It's like Luma and Quasar, and we lose our space clops in the spaceship crash, and we're trying to find him, so I'm stopping at nothing to find this space clops. Luma falls in love, Quasar's killing everybody, <laughs> the space clops finds a friend, it is a, a, a big happy mess. Oh my gosh! I mean, it came from somewhere. I'm definitely gonna have to remember that. I'm, I'm gonna see. You got me at, at boy. You're like, you're the jack of all trades in in the industry. I mean, you do uh, special effects, makeup. You're a singer, a stunt woman, a actress, and um, you're just all over in indie horror. Um, do you also um do other genre of film as well besides indie horror? Yeah, um, I love a good drama. I'm getting really into comedy because um, comedy's fun. It's very lighthearted. Uh, it's kind of a different beast to tackle. Um, more hard than I anticipated. Love sci-fi, um, romance, pretty much anything. Um, I'll take just about any project if I, I read the, the script or the synopsis and it, it seems like something I can connect to. I'll typically go for that's awesome. So where can everybody find you on social media and all your uh, upcoming projects or see some of your films we mentioned tonight on the show? Yes. So um, I have a big list on my Facebook and I have a link tree on my Facebook. So uh, if you just find me at Beth Metcalf, I've got my personal page and my actor's page, uh, both of which should have my link tree, which will take you everywhere. Um and then my Instagram is Beth underscore Metcalf, where you can kind of see some behind the scenes and fun, fun parts of my life that I don't typically post everywhere. So Instagram is kind of where to go for that. Um, those are my two main ones. And then I'm also on TikTok, Beth underscore Metcalf, if you want some dorky comedy that I think is funny. Other people might not. And I just post dorky things. It's all on there. <laughs> hey. hey. We are all nerds. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's fun to be a nerd. And I've got, yeah, it's, it's a blast. Um, Amazon Prime, it came from somewhere. Trepidity, uh, those are both on there. And there's another one on there, too. It's escaping me, but it is on my, my Facebook. It's got the whole list of all the films I've been in. All right. Thank you so much for coming on and having a blast with me. Thank you for having me. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And everybody, thank you for listening to Horror Podcast.